Hi, time for another edition of Simply Stated. I'm here at the beach and it's really windy, so I hope you can kind of bear with me and can hear me properly. Um, for today's show, we're going to start out with the fact that Germany has stepped forward and stopped being a stronger trading partner with Russia, actually. The news came out recently, if you've been following it. Um, 63 billion euros or $60 billion in the January to March time period of 2024. So keeping all that in mind, you know, it shows you how the world is changing. I think Germany definitely wanted out of a lot of relationships that they've been forced into with Russia. And especially under Angela Merkel, I've been working really hard to try to get as much distance from Russia as possible, which is difficult because they're really next door. And of course, if you followed my work, you know that I'm the first to put together the leading paper on economics and how Russia was literally jerking the world's oil and energy resources and economies through beating up on Germany. So I published that paper back in 2012. It was a long time ago, but you know, it was one of my leading works. Um, so even though my money for medical school was taken, I wasn't able to go to nursing school, I still did spend a significant amount of time working on financial issues of journalism. And you know, it's a strong point of mine. Um, these days, of course, I'm just I'm working a regular little job in a store and also building up my side business and doing Simply Stated and then also, you know, taking a little bit of time to do some journalism and then also working on my music and creative projects. And I'm also a model on OnlyFans. So just touch a couple different projects that I'm developing while just working a regular job these days. And I need to also address something. Um, you know, when I was talking about the Met Gala last week, one thing I didn't say, and I feel like I was able to put it into better relief this week, even in my own mind, that, you know, they had JLo as the host of the Met Gala, and the Met Gala is really supposed to be about art, and it's supposed to be about supporting an art museum, and one that I never actually bothered to tour, although I did spend a lot of time up, you know, in New York at one point in my teens touring some of the museums and studied art there. And deeply so to the point that I was able to see some different communist art that was there as well and how ugly their work is. And they can take the most basic things and just make them ugly, like especially the Khmer Rouge and even like some of the Russian and um, Chinese communist art as well. Like it's just really thuggish, really unattractive art. But I wouldn't call it art really at all in some cases. It's more just an expression of their sort of personality. And you know, I've detailed some of those groups and the way they affected my life here in the U.S., which doesn't really get addressed enough as far as labor trafficking because it's still a problem here today. And I think we don't spend enough time, there's just not enough honesty about the issue. And with this current state of issues around the two presidents we had, you know, the last one from and then the current with Biden and the choice we have this year, like, I don't really think either one of them is ever going to be a leading source on it because they've both been so thoroughly compromised by the man that I nicknamed Kendrick and then also the guy I nicknamed Buffalo Bill who are Russian that run the fake front Hollywood agency. And, you know, going back to the fact that Kendrick put me through a fake ceremony when I was five literally changed the way I looked at organized religion forever after because I don't subscribe to any specific religious group anymore. And, you know, fake marriage, fake cult ceremony, and then just spend years trafficking me in the U.S. government, so the world governments had to get involved and get me out. So, it's important to know that's kind of a backdrop to all of this, because as a result, I ended up having knowledge of all the people in the supposed entertainment industry of Hollywood that are actually part of the old KGB, which is called the FSB out of Russia today. And so it's just really important to know that for me, you know, Having JLo host the Met Gala and it's supposed to be about art and the event's been turned to this weird trashy event that seems to focus on attracting children and grooming them even. And there's just nothing artistic about it. For me, I just see an event where, like they might as well have brought in Moam or Gaddafi or Saddam Hussein to host it. Like I thought it was supposed to be about art and they bring in this tyrant who lip syncs is disgusting. You know, she's in Buffalo Bill also works for Taylor Swift and Beyonce and you know, they're trash. And I don't think you can look at the event on any level and say that it had anything to do with art. It's simply this bizarre party that's being put on by tyrants. And it's sort of sad that as a country, even with our entertainment industry, we don't really put JLo in the category she actually belongs as someone who's, you know, used those systems from the FSB and attacked people. 
doesn't perform, doesn't really dance, has no ideas of her own. Um, and she's finally getting it, you know, with feedback and criticism of her, but it's just, it's not enough. Like this is somebody that's, you know, just like P. Diddy, she really needs to be um, put through some kind of process formally where she's really no longer comfortable performing or being around people anymore. And the fact that the Met Gala put her in as a chair in the event in this time period where people are so aware of how disgusting she is makes me lose all respect for the Met and the Met Gala. Like, I'm just done. And it's not okay to just do shows or pundits, you know, it's not okay to just have, like, Megyn Kelly or someone comment on it and just make fun of them for being rude. It's really to the point where people need to start putting more really for what it is. Would you be comfortable with an event being held in New York where Saddam Hussein was hosting it? Would you be comfortable with who putting on a party in New York? Would you be okay with that? Because that's what it is. So please just get that right. Like it's gotta be, you know, would you be okay with the CCP having a big party with all their people up there? Because that's what it is. So anyways, um, and from that point on, I would also go with the reality that I had some really good interactions with Kylie Minogue last year, like through her people, not really her directly, but just online. And she ended up going to the Met Gala and I had always wondered about her because she ended up putting together um, a video back in the 80s during the years that we were all fighting, like everyone was fighting with his heart. And it was very yellow and red and it looked like it really supported them. And in the end, I just felt like How do I trust this person entirely? That video was always kind of in the back of my mind. And then she decides to go to the Met Gala this year when JLo's hosting. So she's got this opening when all these other pop singers are failing. And she's had some really good reception in the US and she just blows it. Like she goes and hangs out with them and I end up deciding that she's just another one. Like she's just another person that's somehow tied with the FSB. Because why else would she be there when JLo's hosting? It just, it just doesn't work. And I think part of it's that there has to be more accountability held for some of these people where they're no longer comfortable attending events. Because think of all the celebrities who don't go. And, you know, and, and to add to that, um, Vanessa Williams, another one who's trying to come back right now, and she had an old video that came out that had all kinds of weird communist symbols in it that had come out in the late 80s, around the time the wall was supposed to fall. It just looked like one big, like, Putin backup dancer popper fest. It was just really strange. So. You know, love some of her songs, but if that's who she is, I'm just not going to support her. And I would never say I was a fan. So that's kind of the end of it. Um, it's just got to be the same way for Kylie Minogue at this point, too. And, you know, I hear, like, Jillo's cancer in tour events, like Justin Timberlake's having problems with pop sales. Um, I would kind of pivot to the fact that you know, who was always a performer that I never really questioned? And that's actually Madonna. And I know people found her to be controversial, but I... Whoa. I actually had a lot of conversations with people about her when I was living in the D.C. area because she's someone that got beat up on a lot, but she always did a lot of charity donations and work. And because she's raised Catholic, always performed sort of mea culpas for all of her performances. And... Her last show in Brazil was almost kind of sad in a way because she actually just went on a stage and just made out with an answer. Like she's just literally just making out with people. And I think it's kind of important to recognize that she, you know, she's not a communist, obviously. And whatever flaws she had, she wasn't someone who was okay with human trafficking and slavery and always made a point of paying people. And the English even know that about her. So, like, I'm, kind, I'm not really asking you to make judgments about morality. I'm asking you to look at how they actually behave on those issues and whether or not they even take responsibility for their own work. Um, I dealt with a lot of personalized attacks and obfuscation and, you know, one issue I dealt with was that, um, for example, I was accused of, when I was a kid, like apparently there was some incident where, like Candace Cameron on Full House had Jody Sweeten attacked and Jody Sweeten like responded later to it all, but, it was because of Buffalo Bill and they blamed me somehow. Like, and it was because of Cersei. She just didn't like Jody Sweden. But in the end, Jody Sweden got like money out of it. It was just this weird like thing with them all sort of swirling money around that led me to the conclusion that like Kurt Cameron is some weirdo that pretends to be Christian. He's like some really weird, dangerous thug. 
Like, you really have to look at who people actually are and not, you know, appearances. I mean, that's kind of what it's really about in the end. As it comes to human trafficking issues. And a lot of this, like, you know, if you want another example of something, I saw in the news this week that there's been a lot of focus on Britney Spears and trying to put her back in a conservatorship. That's because of Kendrick. Um, when I was going through it, still dealing with the trafficking issue a year ago, like one of his, he actually told me, he said that he wanted her money and he didn't want her to have it. And so they were listing out on TMZ, like all of her expenses and everything she's been doing. And what I realized about it was that it was just completely ridiculous because Britney Spears was an adult. She didn't belong in conservatorship. I don't think she ever wanted to work as a singer and dancer, actually, which shows you how ridiculous they all are. They told me not to be one, and I'm actually good at that and like it. And she obviously really doesn't. And a lot of this talk about putting her conservatorship or money, I, to me, just looks like you know she got away from the weird guy from the ramp, or the weird husband. She's trying to live her life. She's on Instagram. She acts a little strange. She's collecting followers and making money off of sponsorships. They obviously don't want to let her have her own money. It's really just about getting back control of her money because that's what was going on with that big Hollywood agency. Like Kendrick even said it, he said he didn't want her to be able to keep it and want it for himself. So my advice on all of that for everyone else is don't worry about Brittany. I think she's doing really well. She's doing what she needs to do to make money her way. And she doesn't need any greedy weirdos from Russia or China putting her hands on her money again. That's kind of what it all is. I mean, you think this stuff is all like weird, you know, pivot back to the Thought Project just so you know, because there was a very serious problem with Sarah St. Wilhelm sending out radio signals to people, especially like one woman. I mean, there was even a phase where a group of people were trying to leave and they all like went to live at a, I don't know if it was a homeless shelter, but it was some kind of temporary place that they were all living to get away from the two of them and some of the other stuff that was happening in town and building their own community. And, a lot of them ended up being killed and what was happening was that um seriously was sending out a lot of messages to people there and like one woman went off with a group of men and she ended up being murdered and seriously used to criticize women saying well the men are saying their correct messages to them and the correct signal saying they're interested it's like well men weren't actually talking to women so what was wrong with that she went off these guys i have no idea obviously she was very confused but she was literally being sent radio signals by the okgd and got herself killed so you know, ultimately there were a lot of arguments about how Cersei will have attacked people even in Dubuque and also in Janesville, Wisconsin. And their claim was that the women didn't say no in some cases were men. Well, how can they if they're being attacked or held down? And how can you claim that they're not, I mean, how can you claim that they're not communicating to you when you're actually not allowing them to communicate at all? And it kind of pivots back to the fact that, you know, they very clearly serial killed and murdered some people on behalf of that gang, and it hasn't really been dealt with. But like when I was in the DC area, there were simply too many people gathered around to protect them to get them put in prison. And, you know, so, I mean, I can sit here and say, I don't understand why GLO is allowed to host an event in New York, but I understand kind of the answer. So I make the show to kind of bring these issues to light continuously, you know, strive for clear communication, strive for taking out of other people's business, recognizing somebody else is just being kind of over ridiculously involved in someone else's or just needling other people. Um, you know, and indirect communication using radio signals is not communication generally. Everyone really has to come up with what's the most logical response to the situations. So, you know, for me, I look at the situation with Jeremy and Trey getting better, and it, I think it has a lot to do with the U.S. becoming more aware of issues, um, us not really valuing some of these sort of fake pop singers anymore, and, you know, kind of moving on. I mean, that's really the big, like, ultimate issue, right? I say you can, like, look at me with my my glasses looking at you, because I can look at the phone. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, so... You know, I, I mean, it's all kind of stuff I can recount and we can talk about it on here, but it's like, you know, there has to be kind of a sort of further path with everything, I think. So today I'm going to sing a song, a little song for you from the album, The Risk Through War, The Pinot Noir, and be done. So you think you are justified, you create bills, we all can make. You pay bills, we all have to pay. You tell me to pay these two full bills. You're a hopeless dreamer. You 
want these two dead, you can do it yourself as to me. I set my mind on the setting sun instead. You're a hopeless dreamer. And you say I'm no good to you, and I'm the one you needed, and you laid waste to the world. In a way no one would imagine, and you say I've got to help you to your offer. Well, no thanks, you're a hopeless dreamer. And everyone's money is yours to take, and you have time to care. And a moment with you is one of big mistakes, wasted meeting. You're a hopeless dreamer. Don't say you've changed, you've only gotten more crazy. And your lazy is even more than the crazy, your hopeless dreamer. Everyone's nosy and time is yours to take and I've got no more time and energy for you. Forget your buzzwords, we don't need synergy, energy, global, integrated, I need my energy. Your hopeless dreamer. You waste everyone's money on your fake parties and you think some fake general will save you. You're a hopeless dreamer. You believe your dream is in your pocket, so tell your little story, tell it all no matter how well you play. The role of the victim, you're just a rich boy, you it us all. You're a hopeless dreamer with no good dreams at all. And that's my story from the recipe war, the Pian Noir, which you can listen to on Spotify and Amazon and Tidal and Deezer, and I think even on iHeart Music. So have a good one.